Hi everybody, Jo here. Just thought I'd pop in and have a little catch up with you. I thought it was about time we had a little crafty session together. Now today I thought we'd create this. Well, I say this, you know what I'm like, I have difficulty creating the same thing twice, but something along these lines. You know, the one thing or one of the things that I love about Lavinia stamps is that we can do so many different things with them. We can have clean and simple. We can do backgrounds that, that take a lot of techniques, a lot of products. They are so versatile. Now, I have noticed um, that we've got quite a few new followers to Lavinia stamps and um, new crafters. So I thought I'd take it back and we're going to do some blending because I know when I started, blending was the one thing that I struggled with. Oh boy, did I struggle. In fact, it nearly put me off crafting i just couldn't get it but i think it's a bit like riding a bike to be honest once you get it boy you've got it and then it becomes something that you can do relatively quickly and relatively easily so i've got a few little tips that i'm hoping will help but also i think blending is one of those things if you're a seasoned crafter if you've been crafting for 20 30 years do you know what you still can't go wrong with a lovely blended background and these gorgeous silhouette stamps so if you fancy joining me, put the kettle on, make yourself a brew, maybe get a cheeky biscuit. Still can't decide what biscuit's going to be my cheeky biscuit. I do think it's got to be one with chocolate though. Anyway, grab yourself that brew and what we're going to do, we're going to get started. And I've used, this is a piece of the Multifarious card and it's from the Mixed Pack. So this is the A6. Nice because it's just such a lovely size. And again, if you're a new crafter, it's not too daunting. Or, you know, a lot of us, especially with lockdown, etc., our mojo's gone a bit. Well, I think when you've got a piece of card like this, it, it just makes it that bit easier. You're not too worried, are you? Now I'm going to use oxides today and I've got to be honest just because the oxides are on my desk. Um, you can use distress inks, you can use your element inks but like I say these were on my desk. Now often when you're starting off blending I've got to be honest I go for colours that actually blend well together. It makes it easier for me. So I'm going for yellow and it's mustard seed I'm using. Now that really easily goes into spice marmalade. And then spice marmalade follows on to burning bonfire, sorry, crackling campfire. That just has gone in my head. And I, I love this colour. I use it so much. Then that deep orange blends well into a red and I've gone for fired brick. And red, if ever you want to add a deeper colour to red, brown's your colour to go for. And I've gone for vintage photo. And what I tend to do is... I just put my inks and again this is just the way my mind works and I open the lids and I'm just putting them in the order I'm going to use them now sorry if some of them go out of shot um, and I'm using round um, blending tools today you can use smoothies I've got a smoothie for my brown and again it's just whichever ones I had for the appropriate colour and I tend to have, so I've got one for my yellow, one with a little, the orange, and then I think that's the red one. There we go. And my orange one will be for both my light and my dark orange. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend that ink first on the card. Now, again, as I say, this is the multifarious, so it takes the ink really well. And what we're going to do is this is the sort of area we're thinking where if we look at the finished design, that's where I'm sort of guessing. I don't want a definite sun. This is, I'm thinking, sunrise or sunset, but I don't want a definite... I could use one of my moon masks, but I just want that sort of idea that the sun's there. So what I'm going to do is start with my yellow. And again, for me, I always start the blending process on the blending tool. So circular motions to put the ink on there. And again, a little tip, I try and have a piece of kitchen roll just so that I don't put too many, well, dare I say, hot sticky finger marks on my card. And I'm just going to go right into the middle. And sorry if we've got a bit of a shadow. I've tried to get a light to give you the best view. It's quite dark here today. It was lovely and sunny this morning, but it's gone very grey and overcast. Do you know, it's not like last year, is it? I remember May, we had a bit of a, well, a summer, to be fair. Not really had one yet, but who knows? So I'm going to go for about here and I'm just going to put in 
my yellow like that. There we go. If I move this light slightly, I'm hoping is that a bit better. So what I'm going to do next is go into my must, um, which one's it? Spice Marmalade. And I'm going to now come around the yellow. So I'm just going to blend and circular motions. Now, don't worry. Now, when you do this at home, you're going to look at this and go, right, Joe, that's a dog's dinner. Don't like that. Don't give up. That will happen and it's the way we're doing it. But we will get rid of that. I promise you. So just keep going. Circular motions all the way around. Now, the way we get rid of this is to go back into the yellow. And for me, this is the bit that most people forget to do. Go back into the yellow and blend over. Because what we want is the way we want. We're not worried about this here. We want to work on this area. And it's where the yellow ink meets the orange ink. And we want to blend that area. And this is where you really need to get those muscles going. So I'm sorry, the camera might shake a bit because my table, because I really am giving it a bit of welly. And I'm just blending out that join. Now, if I bring that closer, can you see it's really working on that where the two colours join? So we're going to work on this bit now. And we're going to go from our Spice Marmalade to our Crackling Campfire. And this is a beautiful deep orange colour. And again, a circular motions and I'm just going all the way around the edge here. Just a little bit more ink on there. And I'm just going to come across the base. And again, I just want to work on the join now. Where the two oranges and then, I know it seems daft, but go back in with the yellow and I'm putting the yellow over. And I think it's the going back that most people sort of don't do. And what you'll see is by going back, you see how it's really blending those colours together now. Now, I haven't left much room for my red, have I? But not to worry. So we'll blend some red along the bottom and you'll see that the red will blend into that orange and then all the way around and I always ink up on my corners because I like my corners darker I think it just gives more oomph to a card if your corners are darker so for me I've always got more ink when I've just inked up Round. Oh, we've lost a bit. Let's just get rid of that. Lost a bit of our foam. Mind you, these are well used. I must admit, I love my love my well used foam pads. And then because we've done the red, again, work in reverse. So we're going to come back in with the orange. And I'm not putting any more ink on this pad because I just want to blend in that space between the orange and the red. So I'm using what's on the pad. And then because we're working our way back up, we're going to come back in with the yellow and start in the middle, but then just bring it out. And I'm just doing one large circular motion. There we go. And so for me... And that, we've got that hint, this is where the middle is, but we've got almost that lovely, lovely blending look. And that's going to be a perfect background for our stamps. Now, again, if you're having a day where your mojo's just, it does disappear, doesn't it? It tends to go AWOL a bit. You could create yourself some backgrounds like this. And, you know, when you've got used to blending these colours, then try some others, greens and blues. And you could just make yourself a stash of lovely backgrounds ready to then have a look through your Lavinia stamps and decide. I mean, often we have stamps, don't we, that we haven't used for a while. Maybe look out some of those stamps. Now, what I'm going to do is, now, as always, I haven't got much room. When you put your inks out like this, it's amazing how much room it takes up. I'm going to bring in my brown. 
and I'm going to again start in the corner and I'm just going to come all the way around and I want to frame this and the reason I'm doing this I tend to do this before I do my stamping and again that's just for me I find it easier to do that so that when I've done my stamping I'm not um not going to smudge just in case I do forget to block my stamping I won't smudge it by going around the edges so I'm just going to blend that in Need a bit more there, don't I? That's a bit harsh there. Let's just blend that a bit better. There we go. So I'm just going to put the lids on my ink pads over here because make sure I get them on the right ones. Because again, I have to be one of those tidy crafters. If I don't put my lids on, I'll end up putting my elbow in my ink pad and then we'll end up with it everywhere. And again, just need to mop up Get Mr. Inky Binky in. So, to our stamping. Now again, for this, because I just love this sort of sunset type background, I had a look at my stash and I went for silhouette stamps, ones that I thought would really pop. So one of the first ones I'm going to use is this lovely seed heads. Now, the larger one of the stamps is lovely, but you have to add colour so which again I do love to do but for this I just want to do the silhouette stamping so we're going to use the smaller one and again I'm afraid you know me I have to put mine on the side to, to stamp up it's just one of those little quirks of mine but I'm sure we all have them now again, these are silhouette stamps. I've just got a magazine and some copy paper here because I find that that works for me. And it's whatever works for you. I know some uh, crafters like the, um, the stamp presses. Some people have got stamp mats. Again, it's whatever works for you. Now these are silhouette stamps. So again, don't be in too much of a rush to lift the stamp up. On the acrylic block you just need to give that ink there's a lot of ink on there you just want to give it time to soak in there we go and then we'll, we'll have a couple of these again nice light tapping and this i'm just using the versafine claire the nocturne so we'll put one here and again always keep one hand on the block giving it time to soak in and we'll just add two of those now the next one wild poppies poppies one of my favorite flowers i've got to be honest and this one and again if you're not sure if you got to this stage and you weren't sure about whether to use the stamp or not remember you've got your lovely acetate and look you can pop it on and see very useful that And again, just nice light tapping. And I'm thinking we'll have one there, I think. Again, just give it time to soak in. And then I do love poppies. There's just something about them. So what's your favourite flower? Just gonna put let's put this one here. And also poppies, you get them so many different colours as well, don't you? I mean my favourite's got to be the blue, the mechanopsis. But unfortunately they won't grow in my garden. They don't like me. Now, just gonna put one on the edge, so it's this side I need to ink up. I have to think about this, it messes with my head. So this edge, and let's just have one just popping in there. Now these I'm doing all first generation because I want them quite bold. But I'm going to bring in 
this um, orchard grass. And what's lovely about this, with it being such a lovely feathery stamp, it's so nice to add detail. I think if I added another silhouette, it, there would be too much. It would be, we'd be going down that pizza card route. But what's lovely about this look, with it being such a feathery, such a delicate stamp, you, you can get away with it. And also, what's lovely is if you notice, I love it when we walk Eric, our Labrador, and I look at the fields, you often get the wispy grass, don't you? And it grows amongst the um, all those other lovely flowers, like your poppies and your cornflower. Now, I'm adding a little touch of second generation, and I'm not pressing hard. I just want the top to show. Just so again it looks like all that we've got that movement. Could use the field grass for this as well. The orchard grass is big sister. Now there we go. Let me see. I do need something there. I don't want to overdo it. So this is where I do have to stop myself. Yes, well, that's enough. Stop. And I love that. I just wanted to get that nice sort of feeling. I don't want to overfill the space here. Remember, we need a little bit of, of white space to let the eye rest. Now, although this isn't actually white, the fact that it's just plain colour, it's classed as white space. And it is nice to just have a little bit of space for your eye to rest. Now, I want to add something at the top, but again, I don't want to overfill it. If I put too much florals in there, again, I don't want to detract from this. I just want to almost add the interest to accompany this. So I'm just going to turn this round and I'm using one of the pound stamps. And I'm afraid this is just in my, in my box. So I don't know what it's called, so please forgive me. It's one of the leaf ones. But they're all on the website. I've got to be honest, I love the pound stamps. And you can do so much with them. So, just inking up. And I don't want too much on here. And I just want to catch this edge here. So there's just the idea. So that's enough. Do we do another one there? What do you think? Just the edge, I think. Yeah. So it's just petering off that shape. And then lastly, we've got one of the butterflies. These lovely, again, silhouette butterflies. I must admit, I use these an awful lot. Now, if you wanted, you could leave it without the butterfly and leave that space and then add um, a sentiment. Quite often, I like to leave cards with a space ready and add the sentiment if and when I need it. It is nice to have those emergency cards in ready. And again, this would be a perfect card because it, it's almost non-specific, non-generic. You could use it for a new home card to get well, just a, a thinking of you or a happy birthday. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my heat tool and it's one of the nice quiet ones so you'll be alright, your ears will be fine. Just because this ink's going to take a while to dry, again it's your Versafine Claire and I don't want to smudge this too much. Now again I could always turn it over and give it a blot. I'm going to add my water splats now and the reason I didn't add them before is the card would then have to be dry for me to stamp on so for me I like to do it this way but also I could leave the design like this if I wanted but you know me I love my water splats so my fan brush is in my pot of water so I'm just tapping it off I don't want huge splats she says <laughs> we'll probably get them And again, this is just to add that sort of detail in the background. And you could let this dry naturally. I don't want them to sort of over egg the pudding. So as they start to dry look and faux bleach, I'm just going to come in with my kitchen roll and give them a dab. And the reason is, so 
just give them a gentle dab is I want to just come round and do add a little bit more ink to the um, surrounding to the frame and I like to do this after I've added the water splats and it almost builds up that frame which is another reason that we wanted the ink to be nice and dry. So we've done that. So what we'll do now is just add a little bit more and it's just to give the frame a bit more oomph. And again, blot it. But you see how it builds up that nice and what we'll do is just bring in our heat tool again. Now these could either be um, fireflies, midges, you know, if it's the end of the day. It could be fairy orbs. Now again, remember when you're heating the card from the front, always heat it from the back as well. And as always, let's just give a quick wipe to our workspace, keep it nice and clean. Now at this stage, you could add glitter if you wanted. Now often we use our white Posca for the highlights, but I just wanted to keep this almost quite warm. So I've gone for my Signo pen. And I think, yeah, this is the gold. And again, I'm being mindful of trying not to lean on my card. And I'm just going to add some nice... So what I want to see is almost that, you know, when you get as the sun goes down, the glints of just such a lovely, almost a sunset. Now, as I say, you could add glitter if you wanted, but I'm not sure whether this card is going to male, female. It could be a couple. So I'm not going to add glitter at the moment. I'm just going to use my pen as my highlight. But the beauty of this is I could always add glitter later. Just a few dots here. And I do think the difference that one of these pens makes. And this really is a sort of card. I mean, you could batch card make this you wanted to make a few but look at that I'm really pleased with that and it didn't take long did it my goodness I bet we've only been here about 10 minutes but as I say you could alter the colours but look if I just try and show you look at the glint on there just think that's so beautiful so much so I realise I've missed one there yeah and that one <laughs> If I bring in the finished one look and the one we've created today, look at that. And, and I love the way this, just with adding the second layer of ink over the top, you get this lovely almost colour on colour with your border. Anyway, I'm hoping you enjoyed that. I'm hoping you have a go. I'd love to see what you do. If you do, will you post your work, please, on Lavinia, on the, our Facebook page and tag me in. It's so lovely that we can all help and encourage each other. I have to say the standard of work on there is absolutely amazing. Honestly, you, you ladies and gentlemen, you blow me away with your designs. So as I say, thanks for joining me today. You take care. I'll pop back soon. Love and hugs. Bye for now.